After years of anticipation and endless rumors, Apple finally revealed its VR and AR headset. This is an absolute game changer for our industry despite the hefty price tag because the potential here is just immense. Hello, I'm Kaz and if you don't know me, I've been covering VR for over 6 years and in this video, I'm ready to dive into why today is such a monumental shift. So let's get started. Apple's VR headset was unveiled today at WWDC 23, Apple's key developer conference. Before we dive into why it's such a significant moment and what the potentially massive features could be, let's start with what we know about the specs so far. The Apple Vision Pro is a standalone device that houses two chips, Apple's M2 and a brand new chip called R1. This last chip is specifically designed to process input from 12 cameras and 5 sensors including eye tracking and foveated rendering. And this is complemented by 6 microphones. The head strap also has spatial audio speakers integrated, promising a great 3D audio experience. All this is used to display content in real time and promises great visual quality. It has 23 million pixels packed into the two small micro OLED displays with a resolution of 4K per eye. Using the custom 3-element lens design, Apple claims the visuals will be better looking than a 4K TV, including great colors, nice deep blacks and sharp breathability. It will run on an entirely new platform called Vision OS, designed to revolutionize productivity, collaboration and connectivity. You can see it as an infinite canvas for apps. You are no more bound by a 2D display and you can now control everything in full 3D. Multitasking is possible with the ability to place apps side by side, move windows and resize them all through the input of your eyes, hands and voice. Yes, the headset does not come with the controllers. Users can type with a virtual keyboard or simply by using voice commands. It does support Apple's magic keyboard and mouse of course, but for gaming, they have shown you that you can use a PS5 controller, so chances are that you can also connect other devices to it. The Vision Pro can also wirelessly connect to a Mac, providing users with a private 4K display wherever they need it. The headset seems more AR focused showcasing most entertainment on a large virtual flat screen and displaying 3D objects that users can place in their real rooms, then rotate and examine. The announcement does suggest some VR capabilities. There's a digital crown you can rotate to switch to what looks like a VR mode. But Apple seems to be very cautious about calling it VR. They call it immersive environments. I think this can potentially be used for more VR-like experiences, although Apple only mentions a support for 180 degree immersive videos, and not much else that has to do with VR. The question remains if and how much the VR mode will be used, and it's also unclear to me if it has 6 stuff positional tracking. A unique feature of the Vision Pro is EyeSight. It's designed to help users maintain a connection with their surroundings. If someone approaches a Vision Pro user, the device makes the user's eyes visible to the other person, making the headset look transparent. It can also provide visual cues to to others about the rarest focus. The Vision Pro also houses Apple's first 3D camera, allowing users to capture and revisit cherished moments in 3D. This feature delivers depth to photos and videos that should immerse you back into the moment. And it kinda looks like Apple's goal is to make us wear it all the time. Thankfully, the design looks incredibly comfortable. With customizable straps, users can switch to bands of different sizes and even colors. There's a modular system that tailors to a wide range of faces and prescription lens adapters can be easily magnetically attached. The device can be used plugged in or with an external power bank that comes with it. It offers up to 2 hours of battery life. That's not a lot. But last but not least, it was mentioned that Apple keeps the user's privacy in mind with something called Optic ID. It is a new authentication system that scans your eyes while ensuring that the data remains fully encrypted and accessible only to you. The same goes for the data from the cameras and other sensors. We should applaud Apple for that. Not much else is clear yet about the headset, so I'll be selling my kidney soon to buy this headset because the price is steep at $3,499, but hey, we've got to review this headset. Now, while Apple calls it an AR headset, and it does look like true AR with plain detection, although I'm not sure if it has positional tracking, it appears to be more like a mixed reality headset though. 
mirroring the trajectory many current headsets are adopting. Interestingly, I was at AW last week, a roundup video is coming up soon, but I got to talk with industry experts there from major tech companies and they all shared a unanimous sentiment. The launch of Apple's headset is the most significant event for this industry. It finally provides validation to a decade of efforts to mainstream this technology. So let's talk about the top reasons why I believe this too. Imagine stepping onto a battlefield of an untapped land with an army of 34 million strong at your back. That's the situation Apple is in with its vast legion of iOS developers and it's the first reason why I think this headset's launch is huge. Picture these devs armed with their skills marching towards the goal of crafting that killer app which could transform Apple's headset into an essential tech gadget. It could be a gold rush era in the VR world, much like the early iPhone days. It's predicted that app developers might try to replicate the success of early iPhone devs. This could trigger a surge of new software developments that could flood our current platforms, including Quest or Steam VR. Since all headsets are starting to focus on a mixed reality experience, hopefully we'll get to use the same apps. But what sets Apple apart is its existing huge ecosystem. They aren't just launching a new device, they're unveiling an entire sub-ecosystem that can effectively leverage what's already there. So it was announced that the Apple Vision Pro will get a new app store with access to thousands of familiar iPhone and iPad apps. They said 100 iPad apps will be available at launch. This headset could give many people an innovative and perhaps more productive way of working on the go. It doesn't stop there. CEO Tim Cook's vision for AR revolves around communication and connection. So of course FaceTime is now spatial in the headset. Participants will sound as if they're speaking right from where they are positioned. If you're wearing the headset, a digital representation will be shown of you. That is created by using the front sensors of the headset. Then Apple's machine learning techniques will make an avatar that look beautifully realistic. And I think that could add a layer of human authenticity to virtual interactions. Now add access to other Apple apps, games and entertainment, and perhaps a version of Apple Fitness Plus and you now have a comprehensive XR package with a lot more use cases for different users. Apple is strong in its ability to cultivate walled gardens, which while limiting in some aspects ensures consistent high quality user experiences. While we might initially encounter a storm of experimental and, let's be honest, possibly garbage apps, these are the first steps in a journey toward finding the best ways to interact and move in XR. This could reshape the XR landscape entirely, but only time will tell how far this is actually going to take us. Now when the gates of a new kingdom are opened, settlers from all walks of life come pouring in and the same is expected to happen here. So reason two is the increase in software. We anticipate a surge of enthusiasts, uh, developers and investors gravitating towards our industry. More people translate to more creativity, more funding and more compelling content. Setting in motion a beneficial cycle that keeps our industry vibrant and growing. But let's address the elephant in the room, the price tag. Yes, it's hefty and yes, the Apple fans among us might be willing to shell out just for the allure of that iconic half-bidden Apple, but here's where it gets interesting. A lot of people and I myself don't think Apple is looking to sell to the masses straight away. It's a strategy akin to setting out bait to reel in the big fish. They're targeting developers first, excited to see what they'll make with this headset. And once the creative wizards in our community carve out clear use cases and compelling applications, Apple intends to play their master stroke, releasing a more affordable headset for a wider audience. Analyst Crow indicates that Apple is already plotting its next moves with plans for future versions at lower price points and higher volumes. This could be the catalyst to bring the technology a step closer to its ultimate goal, a headset so lightweight and practical that you'd want to wear it every day. Or maybe it will be a pair of lightweight glasses that can provide you with real-time information as you navigate your day. Just imagine the possibilities. The third and last reason lies in Apple's shrewd sense of timing and its neck 
for refinement. They're not the pioneers in every space they conquer, rather they're the masters of evolution, adept at transforming existing concepts into breakthrough innovations. Take the iPod for example, prior to its release, the market already had MP3 players. And with the iPhone? Well, Blackberry were already there to set the stage. Yet it was Apple that transformed these categories and took them mainstream. Now, VR also has its skeptics, those who question its validity or simply refuse to use it. But let's flashback for another moment. Remember when the iPhone was a novelty? Or when the iPad didn't seem needed? And don't get me started on the AirPods. People mocked them, myself included. I questioned their price, their design, and the constant fear of losing them. But then I got a pair and now I can't do without them. The point here is that Apple has a unique ability to take products, even those that initially seem odd or unnecessary, and transform them into items we simply can't imagine our lives without. So if there's anyone capable of catapulting VR and AR into the mainstream and making it the new normal, it's Apple. Hopefully they haven't given up on VR though. That's my opinion. Again, only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, we've got exciting times ahead. What are your thoughts about Apple entering our industry? And I am so curious, would you consider buying one? Share your reasons in the comments below. And if you're interested to dig deeper into the headset's features, be sure to check out the articles by my friend Ben over at RoadToVR.com. He was among the select few VR journalists invited to the event and he'll be sharing his insights there. If you enjoyed this video, please show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to stay updated on all things VR. As always, I really appreciate your company. Special shout out to my dedicated chums and tot snel.